I was autographing a book for a man the other day. And during the course of the autographing, I said to him, what is your business, sir? He responded, I am the executive secretary of the Board of Realtors in our county. And he added, I love it. I like everything about houses, buildings, and land. It thrills me. I like people. And he added, I even like myself. How wonderful to be alive, he said. And I responded, boy, you really motivate me. Then a few days earlier, I actually dedicated a bank in Florida. In this line of work, you never can tell what you're going to get into. And you wouldn't think a minister would dedicate a bank. And this was really an extraordinary bank. Actually, it's a savings and loan. A 40 million, a 14 million dollar building. The floor was made to look like the waves of the sea. Green and blue blended together in wavy lines. And this came up into conjunction with a rug that looked like sand in color. And upon inquiry, I was told that this was the waves of the sea washing on the sea beach. That was the floor of the bank. And all around were oil paintings done by a local artist. They gave me one. Palm trees grew through the roof. What a bank. And it's on the big board of the New York Stock Exchange. They dedicated this bank at 8 o'clock in the morning. They had a tent which had 2,000 seats in it. And I said to the man, how in the world are you going to get a crowd of 2,000 people at 8 o'clock in the morning? Actually, there were 2,300 present. He's a big fellow, this uh, head man, the president of the bank. Great big hulking fellow. He said, now, doctor, no fooling. You give him a speech, but when you dedicate this bank, you dedicate it with prayer because we are handling the people's money. And this is a sacred business. Like you dedicate a church, you dedicate this bank. Then they had uh, taken a half hour and set it apart for me to have interviews with people who had problems. Each interview was to be only five minutes. And they had a lady at the door with a time clock. And it's hard to even get started in five minutes. I must have seen seven or eight people. All of them depressed, discouraged, dismal, except one. She was a young woman, maybe 30 years of age, beautiful girl. And she swirled in and grabbed me by the hand and she says, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus. And she said, I haven't 
a problem that I am not able to handle with the Lord's help. She said, all that I came in here to do was to encourage you and to share with you as a sister in Christ that life can be very wonderful when it is lived with Jesus. So with these two experiences, I thought I would figure me out a sermon on how wonderful to be alive. How do you feel about that? Are you glad you're alive? Well, you know, if you're not alive, you're dead. And there's no alternative between the two. But how alive are you? A famous Chinese philosopher named Lo Tse. It's always adds a classical element to quote a, cla a Chinese philosopher. And I don't know whether that's the way you pronounce his name or not. He says, to be alive is to touch life at many points. The more points at which you touch life, he continues, the more alive you are. So, how alive are you? Now you know this church, or any church. You see little churches along the roadside? You see them up dusty avenues in this city. They are the most important buildings in this city or in the countryside. There's no building in New York City more important than the church, Protestant, Catholic, or Jewish. Not the city hall. Not the Chase Manhattan Bank. Not the Waldorf Astoria. None of them. This is it. Why is it it? Because this is the place where you learn to be alive. And in those other places, you don't learn that. Now, the Bible is full of this. This is the most alive book that was ever written, actually. It's, it's full of life. There's no death in here. Not a bit of death in here. Not a bit of desultoriness in this book. This is full of life. I have come that she might have what? Life. What kind of life? Abundant life. What's the word abundant mean? to rise up in waves. I'm come that you might have life that rises up in waves. Physical life, mental life, spiritual life, vital life. How alive are you, are you, or are you half dead? That's the question. He giveth you life and breath and everything is another quotation from the Bible. So, we're here today to inquire how alive we are. Now, what do I mean by really being alive? How sensitive am I how acutely responsive am I to the world and the people and everything in it? Are my nerves keen? Am I aware? Do I have a sharp, clear awareness? I have a farm in Dutchess County, and the other day I was standing there 
looking out over a snowy landscape. And there was a birch tree. I planted it myself years ago. It's now so big around and very tall. And it was standing there against a clear, cloudless, blue sky. And a man with whom I was talking suddenly lighted up in his countenance and he pointed to the tree and he said, what could be more beautiful than that? And appropriately, he said, only God can make a tree. Well, now I'd been seeing that tree every day. His sharpness of sensitivity and awareness was much more advanced than my own. Now, the other day I was riding with a taxi driver down Fifth Avenue in traffic. And we were stopped a number of times. It was about 4 p.m. A long shaft of light came across the park athwart the avenue and disappeared up 65th Street. The taxi driver said to me, isn't that beautiful? The way the long light shakes across the avenue. <laughs> I said, my friend, you're an artist. You should be a writer. The long light shakes across the avenue. It reminded me of Tennyson. The sunlight falls on castle walls and snowy summits old and story. The long light shakes across the lakes and the wild cataract leaps in glory. And the taxi driver and Tennyson were hewn out of the same piece. So naturally, I was interested in this man. I said, are you a religious man? Why, well, I said, of course. I'm an active member of the Greek Orthodox Church. I know the Lord, he said, and he has filled me with gladness, or something to that effect. Sensitivity, that's the idea. He has filled you with life and breath and every good thing. Now, I've known a great many people in my lifetime who've had this sharp, keen sensitivity and awareness. The closer you get to Jesus, the more you have the mind of Jesus in your mind, the more exciting life becomes because you become a more exciting person. He makes exciting people. Everybody he ever remade is exciting. And if you're not exciting, then if I, I'm not, uh, we better get that way. You know, the longer I talk, the better my voice is getting this morning. When I started out this morning, I didn't know whether I could talk or not, but I practiced positive thinking and asked the Lord if this was any good to help me say it. Well, apparently, he thinks it isn't all that bad. <laughs> One of the most exciting 
people I've ever known is the late Lowell Thomas. I knew him for 40 years or more. Truly one of the most remarkable human beings who ever lived in this country. He died at 89 in his sleep. And it was like a great tree that fell against the skyline. Once, years ago, they had a, a dinner in his honor at the Quaker Hill. And a number of us spoke. I remember I tried to develop the idea that Lowell was a character. There is a certain kind of an individual who's a character. Webster defines a character as an unusual personality. Lowell was that. He was like the same breed as Daniel Boone, Will Rogers, Marco Polo. He was greatest of them all, in my judgment. His voice was heard by more human beings on this earth than any other voice due to the long continuity on radio, the oldest broadcaster of them all. He had this sharp sensitivity and awareness. He called me up one day and he said, Norman, come over here as fast as you can. It's a matter of life or death. I said, are you sick? He said, I said it was a matter of life or death. So I got over as fast as I could. He said, I want you to take up cross-country skiing. <laughs> I said, where does the life or death come in? He said, you will live longer if you do this. <laughs> he said, on a cold winter day, when the snow is deep, and you ski across the land alone, and you stop amidst a grove of trees, you will hear the palpable silences of Almighty God. Sensitivity, sharpness, awareness. I gave his eulogy in St. Bartholomew's church. And I remember quoting him. He said that as a boy, he lived with his family at Cripple Creek in Colorado at 10,000 feet. From their home, they could see 150 miles north, south, and west from the top of the Sangre de Cristo, the blood of Christ reigned. And that his father would take him up there at all hours of the night to show him the majesty of the heavens, some spectacular spectacular phenomenon. And he got so he could hear voices calling him from the other side of the Sangre de Cristo, calling him to far parts of the world along the golden road to Samarkand which he followed all his life. And up there at night, even when it was zero weather, his father would quote him long passages out of the Bible and say to him, son, this is a wonderful world. It's full of adventure. It's full of life. It's full of joy and excitement. 
because Almighty God is in it. And if you follow God and Jesus all the uh, days of your life, you will know the glory and the power and the wonder. And one morning, Lowell turned over in his sleep, gave a long sigh, and was gone. He said he wanted to be the first newscaster reporter to go to the moon. Instead of that, he went to heaven. And what excitement there must have been in heaven the day he arrived. <laughs> His heavenly father must have gotten great big thrill out of his gifted son home at last. I cite all this because there are qualities and levels to life that we've got to reach if we want really to live during the years that are allotted to us. That's why we want you to come here every Sunday to the first service and to the second service and uh, everything else in order that you will go out of this place alive, vibrant, virile, excited, caught up, feeling healthy in body, in mind, and in soul. He giveth you life and breath and everything. How wonderful to be alive. So let's live in the only one of whom it was ever said, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of life. We didn't ask for it. We didn't know anything about it. But through the mysteries of birth, you gave it to us. Some of us you allow to live on this earth for 20 years, 40 years. 60 years, 80, 90, even a few, 100. And then this mysterious, wonderful thing called mortal life is ended. But you love us so much that you don't end life with that. You give us eternal life. How can we enjoy eternal life if we don't learn to love life here through Jesus Christ, our Lord? <laughs>